something that I believe the Lord gave me is manifesting sonship. Amen. And I believe most of what I'm trying to do and bring out in everybody is that we can be manifested sons of God. Yes, Amen? Sir. Yes, sir. Hey, I want to give you two one of these. You're blessed. Be blessed. Yeah. All right. And so uh, Wednesday night, I get to let my little hair that I got come all the way down. And uh, so we're going to go over some of the stuff then and review some stuff and do some stuff. But I'll, I'll, before we get started, just think about that. Uh, manifested Son of God. Manifesting Sonship. What does that conjure up in your imagination? Right. You know, what does that mean to you? All right. You know. Are you thinking about it? Yeah. Or are you waiting for me to tell you what it is? Because we all got the Spirit of God in us. Amen. Yeah. The Spirit joins to our spirit and lets us cry out, Abba, Father. Yeah. We know we, we are in Him. We have the Spirit. Amen? Yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> I'm not going to keep you long today, I think. <laughs> but you never know what God's got in mind. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord. Mm. I yield myself to the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. So for the last three weeks, uh, my core um, verse that I've been working on is this. And that's Romans. This is out of the Passion Translation. And I believe they're going to bring that up for you. It is in, if you got this, if you got the little uh, bulletin, it's in your bulletin. And the Passion Translation is in Romans chapter 1, verse 17. It says, this gospel unveils a continual revelation of God's righteousness, a perfect righteousness given to us when we believe. One of the definitions of righteousness was God's, the essence of God's perfect nature, and that's given to us. Okay, and what does this continual revelation do? It moves us from receiving life through faith to the power of living by faith. This is what the scripture means when it says we are right with God through living by faith or the just or the righteous will live by faith. Yeah. Paul says I press toward the mark of the prize yeah. of the high calling of God. So maybe, I, I got this from Pastor Carol when he said maybe, just maybe, possibly think maybe that the high calling that Paul was referring to was manifested sonship. Yeah. Uh, all right. yeah. Maybe that's what he was drawing after. That's what he was going for, is being a manifested son of God on the earth. Amen? Yes, amen. We are trained, we are here to learn who we are, knowing that we are sons and daughters, and we want to manifest the lordship of Christ in this earth as those manifested sons. And whatever came to your mind, what a manifested son, a manifested daughter, a manifested child of God is, to rise up in you. Yeah. I mean, to rise up in you. We can look at it, you know, the, 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 the pinnacle, the one that, it, that um, reveals true sonship was our Lord and Savior, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Amen. We'll never take his place. But he did come and says, learn of me, watch me, see how I'll do it. I'm going to show you how this life is supposed to be lived. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? It's all right. So this is our core scripture. I, I read it like this. Going back into this, it says, it moves us from receiving life through faith. And this life through faith can be all the promises of God. Okay? Just think about that. We can, it moves us from just receiving to living. So the promises of God are health. Yes. And this gospel reveals that not only can you receive health, but you can live in health. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. This gospel reveals not only that you can receive prosperity, but you can live in prosperity. 
This gospel doesn't only say that you can receive peace, but you can live in peace. Yes. Not only can you receive joy in situations, but you can live in joy. Yes, sir. All times. This is what this gospel unveils in you. This righteousness that God has given you takes you from just receiving the things to living in the things, abiding in the things, because you are becoming, or not just becoming, you already are son of God, you are manifesting sonship. Amen? Amen. Far beyond receiving unto abiding. Amen. Uh, Psalms um, 16 is, is, is uh, a little bit of the same thing. Is it Psalm 16 and 11? I believe this is out of the good news, but you can bring it up out of the probably, maybe, I don't think the Passion Translation has it, so we'll go ahead and get it from the King James Version. And that is Psalms. Psalms 16 and 11. Let's go there. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. In thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. In the uh, Good News Translation, it says... You bring me a continual, no, this is passion. That is the passion. You bring me a continual revelation of resurrection life. Again, that continual revelation. This is just not a one-time thing for you. You just don't say, I'm re um, I have a resurrected life. It is showing you a continual, this righteousness, this relationship that we have with God is a continual growing revelation of resurrected life yeah, not the same old life That's right. how many times do I tell you we're not ordinary people right. we are not ordinary human yeah. beings we are different we have been born again we have been birthed from heaven by the spirit of God we are children of God saints of heaven children of light we are the family of God, and we are different. So this resurrection life is not like a normal life that normal people live. Your life is different, headed in a different direction, with different things, better things than the normal world can even understand. That's why the world is constantly trying to tell you to chase after what we think is best. And the spirit is saying no. We, we were talking about this. I, I, we may have talked, we talked about this on Wednesday, and it's like, I'm bringing this up. I don't know why, but I got to. We talked about this, that the, the, the ways of the world, the ways of the flesh will fight against the ways of the spirit. I mean, actually fight against it. And when you think about the flesh, you think about the ways of the world. They want, it wants to fight against the ways of the spirit. Yeah. It does not want you full of joy unless you get something. Right. It says, right. it's, not, it's the cause and effect. You can only have joy if. And God says you can have joy before the if. Right. Before the manifestation. Amen, we talked about that last week. We'll talk about it again today, okay? Well, actually, we're going to talk about it right now. <laughs> So last week we talked about Abraham and how he believed God and believed what God said would happen. So that his faith, his belief that what God said would happen produced hope. That's what it says. Here's Abraham. God tells him, you're going to be the father of many nations. It's a funny, I started looking at this last night. First he said, see the stars. You know, your seed will be like that. See the sand or the seashore, your, your seeds are going to be that many. And he was saying, this is going to happen. But when he really got down to it, he went from, this is going to happen that I have made me. It went from, you will be a father of many nations to, you are a father of many nations. Wow. 
the declaration was spoken. Yeah, all right. Abraham believed it. Yeah. The whole world said, it ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. Abraham said, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> get thee behind me, thoughts. Casting down vain imaginations yeah. that exalt itself against God. He cast those things down. His thoughts might have started out, I'm too old, Sarah's too old, she ain't ever had kids, this is not going to happen. Yeah. But he cast those things down. He cast those right. things down. He dwelt on the promise. And the promise produced hope. And his hope got so strong in him as he thought about God is able to do this. I, don't, I know it doesn't look like it. Eleazar or whoever his, what was this guy in the, from the, the guy that he said he thought he was going to be his child at first, I don't know. His chief servant probably was like, well, you, you, it's probably not going to happen. Get away. Stop talking. Shut up. Leave me alone. Okay. And he's thinking about this. Just, and he's thinking about this and thinking about this. And all of a sudden it says he received power and gave glory to God. Because he knew, he decided God was able to do this. I even think it was to the point of his belief was said, was that even if my body can't produce it, God, maybe like he, was, he did with Sarah, uh, with uh, Mary, he would have to overshadow Sarah and give her, I don't know. All I know is God said, Sarah's going to have a son. Sarah is going to have a son. Sarah is going to have a son. His faith would not, his faith produced that hope, that hope produced that joy. That joy gave him praise to God and he was, and he declared, I believe God. He is able to do it. The one that brings the dead to life, his body, and calls things that don't exist, calls them into existence, his son. God was able to do it. My body might be dead. Sarah's body might be dead, but he can bring them to life. And we don't have a son, but he calls it. He is going to do it. I can just sit back and find rest. Amen? Amen. Amen? So that's what we're going to here. We're going into from receiving by faith to living by faith, where we can abide in peace and rest. The byproducts of faith. Joy, peace, and rest. Abraham had it all. I mean, just think about it. He was even willing to sacrifice his own son. I don't think he even, I think after Isaac was born, he probably didn't miss a beat. He might have just said, okay, you want me to sacrifice him? I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to happen, but this boy is going to be an heir. Why? Because God said it. So let's go on up and worship, son. You're the sacrifice, but let's do it. And we are going to come back. We are going to come back. You guys stay here. We're going to go worship. We will return. I don't know how God's going to do it, but I'm going to do my part and trust in him. Amen? I'm telling you, he had rest even when he had the knife in his hand. Wow. Yeah. Right. <laughs> even when he had, we can't fathom that. I can't fathom that. My child somewhere, and I got the knife in my hand, and I'm constantly waiting for him to say, no, no, no. I don't think Abraham was like that. I think he got to the point that I can trust my God. No matter what he tells me to do, what is going on, what the circumstances look like, I can trust him. And if I sacrifice him, this young man is going to raise up because he has already told me that he... It's going to be through Isaac that all the world is going to be blessed. Amen. I'm going to trust that. Amen. So we can do the same thing. Abraham believed the decoration. I, I said this. I want to get this in your spirit. Abraham believed God. Now, he might have something that we don't have is that the angel of God came to him, had dinner with him and said, Sarah's going to have a son. She laughed. She laughed. She said, I didn't laugh. He said, yeah, you did laugh, but that's okay. I don't care if you laugh. You're going to have a son. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't say, oh, since you laughed, it's over with now. Since you didn't, don't think it's going to happen. No, he said, mark it. 
you mark it. So we don't have that, but we do have the word of God. And the word of God tells us many promises of God. The word of God declares things over you. And when it declares things over you and you take that into yourself and you believe like Abraham believed, God has declared it. He said it is done. It's going to be done. We, it's, it's a, I was thinking about this and I wanted to, I always say this and I don't do it. I don't, I don't ever do it because I don't like complication. Y'all know me, right? I said, God has made life simple, right? But we complicate it. Yeah. And we say this. God said it, I believe it, and that's it. It's kind of like this. Just think about this. Someone comes and says, one plus one equals two. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> no, 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 listen. One, and then you add one more to it, and you have two. And you're like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I don't understand. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Come on. God said it. I believe it. That's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't understand. Tell me something how this is going to work. One plus. And so then what they do is they come and they say, well, some scholar gets out there and he says, one times a hundred divided by this, and then take the square root of this, and then change that, and move it over here, and the next thing you know, you come up with one. And you just got, instead of one plus one equals two, yeah. or you come up with the two, you've got one, and all this mess in here you don't even need. Right. You don't even need it. Right. And you come up with the same answer, but it's just too good to be true. How can yeah. one plus one equals two? How can that happen? How can God say it, I believe it, and that's that is going to happen? Yeah, all right. That's how simple God made it. We complicate it with formulas and situations yeah. and things that we think we must do to come up with number two. Yeah. Ooh, that sounds kind of weird, huh? Number two. <laughs> to come up with the number two. <laughs> to come up with the answer, the correct answer. Yes. When it's just that simple, add your faith to God's word and that brings you rest. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You can clap on that. Add your faith to God's word, that brings rest. Resting in the promises of God. That is what it's all about. It says, it says the children of Israel did not enter the promised land because unbelief. The same word was spoken to them, but they did not add their faith to it. Instead, they scrutinized God every step of the way. The land is yours. I'm going to give it to you. I'll drive them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't get it. We don't get it. No, listen. I'm God. I'm your God. I brought you out of Egypt. I'm going to take you to the promised land. I'm going to drive them out before you. It is yours. You're going to possess it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't get it. I don't, they're, they're too big. They're this, whatever. All these complicated things instead of just taking the word of God as Abraham did and said, you're going to have a son. You're going to possess the land. They couldn't do it and because they didn't add it with faith, so they never entered the rest of God because they didn't trust him. He gave them manna every day, and every day they got up wondering if manna was going to be on the ground. Every day they woke up. They want to look out. Oh, it's still there. They didn't trust him. You know, and then some people probably still thought, well, I don't know if it's going to be enough for Saturday. So we better got them up a little bit more and it became warmy. You know, they're always testing, testing, testing God. Are you real? Are you there? Do you love me? Are you powerful enough? Are you strong enough? Can I trust you? Do I need to build a bull and trust it instead of you? Do I need to trust another nation's God instead of the one who has done all this for me? Do I need to trust the world's way of doing things instead of trusting God? All right. Can I believe in him and trust him 100% or do I need to look at some other way to get me to the answer that I'm looking for? Amen? Yeah. Is this, this is all right, Annie. Yeah. Bless God, absolutely it is. I'm preaching to myself. Amen? Yeah. All right. 
All right. So, I talked about this. Hope gives birth to joy, and joy produces peace and rest. So we want to go to, um, I, I, I want to go to this. This is something that I added. We're going to go to Romans chapter um, 8, verses 15 and 16. And this is what I was talking about. And, and, and there is, there's, some, there's something hidden in here that's good. It's simple, but it's hidden because we look over it. Okay. We'll start with the King James Version. Can you do that for me? We're going to um, Romans chapter 8, verses 15 and 16. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption where we cry, Abba, Father. This spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Amen? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to read that out of the good news. Um, same, same verse, same two verses. For the spirit that God has given us does not make us slaves and cause us to be afraid. We, it doesn't cause us to be afraid. Instead, the spirit makes you God's children. And by the spirit's power, we cry out to God, Father, my Father. God's spirit joins himself to our spirits to declare that we are children of God. Okay. There's a declaration. Now just think about this. God's spirit joins with our spirit. All right. With a declaration that you are a son. Amen. You can believe that. It makes us children like that. What is the secret? Let the spirit of God not only join with your spirit to tell you that you're children of God, but join with your spirit of all the promises of God. All right. It is the spirit of God that he gives you. Join him with your spirit. Yeah. And then when you declare the promises of God through the spirit, you claim them as yours because you're believing them. Just It's a declaration over your life. Yeah. You can say the spirit joins with my spirit that says I'm healed. The spirit joins with my spirit that says I'm a child. The spirit joins with my spirit that says I have peace. The spirit joins with my spirit that says I'm overcoming. The spirit joins with my spirit that tells me, declares, whatever the promise I need in my life or those around me, it declares, joining with your spirit, telling me that it is yours. Yes, Let the spirit of God join with your spirit causing you joy than when you cry out, Abba, Father, or cry out, I am healed, or cry out, I am blessed, or cry out, I have it all, or cry out, whatever it is, the Spirit joining the Lord Spirit, crying out the blessings of God, and watch them just overflow and overtake you. Amen. Amen. That's good stuff. All right, y'all can all just drop off your money right here and pay me for the book that I didn't read. I'm just, forgive me. All right. Now, this is what we got into Wednesday night. This manifesting sunshine. I got really happy about it. Because if, maybe, just maybe, possibly, the high calling of God is manifesting sonship. And I do remember that... Um, well, the kingdom of God is the rule of God, the reign of God, the authority of God, the power of God working in your life. But manifesting sonship, this sonship. Let's go to jump on down to verse 18 to 23. King James Version. For I'm going to read all of King James. And then I'm going to read the good news. And, and, you know, I don't say forgive me. It's just, 
these simple versions, I'm a simple guy, so I need simple, okay? So I, I try to get something that, that works for me that way. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared, that the glory which shall be revealed in us, I always say, the glory that is, is being revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. They're waiting on us. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected it, subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth in, and travaileth in pain until now. And not only that, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, we, even we ourselves, groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to with the redemption of the body. Amen? Yeah. You get it? Okay, let's go through something simpler so I can explain it a little bit better. I consider that what we suffer at this present time cannot be compared at all with the glory that is, that is going to be revealed in us, that is being revealed in us. So the things that you go through, he considers not. Just like Abraham. I don't consider these things as anything, as meaning, as meaning anything. And that's the thing about righteousness being revealed, knowing that your relationship is intact. That's what we talked about last week. Knowing, always knowing your relationship is intact and you and God are good, that he has made you righteous, you have a right relationship. So this, this, this righteousness is being revealed to so you. Always have it. So um, you don't have, you don't, you don't consider the contradictions. When life throws you a curve, you don't have to think, okay, did I pray right or did I pray wrong? Was I mean to my wife and my dog and my kids? Am I being punished for something? Am I not getting what I, that, that, am I getting the blessings because of something that I did? You know, you don't have to consider that because your relationship is right. Your relationship is good. Your relationship with God is intact. His love doesn't, has not failed. It has not diminished. He's not out to get you, punish you, or anything like that. So you don't consider these things. The sufferings of this present time are not even worthy to be brought up compared to what is happening inside of me. Man, I don't even have to think about that. And then, 19, all of creation, all of creation, all of creation waits with eager longing for God to reveal his children. Passing translation says the entire universe is the entire universe. The entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of the glorious sons and daughters of God. Just think about that, people. Yes. Just that all of creation. You're like, can trees expect? It's part of creation. Wow. The whole universe. I told them, I, I thought about this, so that's what I said on Wednesday. Bears are walking out in the woods, and when one of us gets close to that manifestation, they stand at attention. They're like, this could be it. This could be it. Yeah, this could be it. I know that seems kind of silly, but really, it says it right here. All of creation is waiting for us to know who we are. Wow. Yeah. All right. Is that a big responsibility? No, it's God's responsibility. All you got to do is believe it. Amen. Right. Let's, let's keep going. For the creation was condemned to lose its purpose. Not of its own will, but because God willed it to be so. Yet there was a hope. And I put it, I think I said something like this about entropy last week or something like that. God allowed, once Adam fell, God allowed decay and corruption to start coming in. He didn't cause it, but he allowed it. And he didn't allow him to eat from the tree of life because it says... If they eat from the tree of life now, they'll live in a permanent state of darkness. So he had to 
allow things to come in so people would say, something's not quite right. I'm going to, God, you know, there's something not right with me. There's something not right with creation because I know God is perfect. He put that longing in our heart for perfection in which he first created us. And, he, and Adam failed and he allowed that to come in so we would seek after him. Seek after the right. Okay. Verse 21. That creation itself would one day be set free from its slavery to decay and would share the glorious freedom of the sons of God. All of creating is waiting for us to just realize who we are and walk in. That should thrill you. I hope that, like I said, I, this is not my saying. This is Brother Butch, Butch Brew. It's like, if you ain't having fun serving Jesus, you're doing it wrong. This should not be a burden. This should be exciting to you. Of what God has planned, His plan of perfection in your life. His plan. You don't. It, it's like I said. You don't have to worry about. Am I doing it quite right? Am I praying right? Am I praying enough? Am I reading enough? Am I nice enough? Am I kind enough? Am I doing all right? What is going on? You, you get out of works and just believe what Christ has done through His redemptive power. He has cleansed you. You are right with God. You don't have any responsibility to live right, but you do that because you're a, a rejoice because he's what he's done for you. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, that's the thing. You are not going to live like a heathen when you really believe what God has done for you. Yeah. That's just the way it is. You're not going to do it. You are grateful for what he's done and you live out of a grateful heart for what he has done and redeemed yes, you sir. from. Yes, sir. And you're not going to be chasing those things. So, but again, it is don't you cannot get back into works as though I must, I must do, I must be, I must, I got to do it like this. All you have to do is believe. God said it. I believe it. Yeah. And that's that. <laughs> not God said it. And so I got to read my Bible and I got to be nice to my neighbor and I got to feed my dog every day and I got to wash the clothes and do this and be a good husband or be a good wife or be a good this or be a good dad da -da 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 -da. and then I believe it and then it's going to happen. I said it, I believe it, and it's done. Yes, sir. Amen. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. Okay. <clears throat> So we have a glorious freedom as children of God. For we know that up until the present time, all of creation groans with pain like the pain of childbirth. But it is not just creation alone which groans. We who have the first fruits of God's gifts, the Holy Spirit, also groan within ourselves as we wait for God to make us his children and set forth free our whole being Amen. our whole being and he's willing to do it actually he's done it all he said it is finished on the cross it's finished it's all done it is up to, it is up to us to believe God's word accept it and allow it to operate in our lives like that amen amen amen, amen. amen. Our whole being free, spirit, soul, and body. All of it free in Christ, in unison with him. Amen? I think that's some good stuff, y'all. All right. Now, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to go into some little bit more about manifesting sonship. There is a verse in the Bible. A... a, a story in the Bible, not just a verse. We're going to read it out of Matthew, I mean Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. As soon as we start, we'll all know the story. And I told you guys about it on Wednesday, so don't give up the, the punchline, okay? <laughs> okay. And this is what we're going to talk about. We're talking about manifesting sonship, right? So I'm just going to read this, and then we will uh, we'll go from there. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41. And the same day, 
When even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And as he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and saith him to him, Master, carest not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and saith in the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Okay. Now we're going from receiving by faith to living by faith. What is, in your opinion, the, the greatest display of sonship in this little story that I read? Don't answer. <coughs> Jesus got up in a display of authority and power, and he rebuked the wind and spoke to the sea, and it obeyed him. That is true, powerful sonship. But that is receiving by faith. The biggest display of his trust in God is when chaos was everywhere. People in the boat were chaotic. Yeah. The outside circumstances were chaotic. Yeah. Everything was chaotic. And where was he at? Mm -hmm. It wasn't because he was exhausted that he was asleep. He was at rest and he was calm oh, yeah. because he trusted in God. Yes, he spoke the words, let's pass over to the other side. And he knew that they were going to pass over to the other yeah. side. And the greatest display of sonship was him in the boat at rest when chaos was everywhere else. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. He didn't rebuke the wind and the wave for himself. Right. He didn't. Right. I mean, if that was the case, when he was walking on the water at another position, he would have had to do that. He's walking on the water and the storm is blowing everywhere. That's what Peter gets out. Storms are blowing. He's not saying peace be still so I can walk on the water. He's like, the chaos is everywhere, but I'm trusting God. The chaos can be everywhere around you, but you can trust in God. Your greatest faith is when you don't allow the circumstances to dictate to you, but you Know what the word of God says. Stand on it in faith. Let it produce hope and joy within you. And you allow God to do it through you. And if, and if every, someone else needs it, you can say, okay, peace be still. All right. So they can be calm. Yeah, all right. I can do that as a son of God. I have that authority as a son of God. But when it's going on in my life, when, when I can just say that's not going on, but when things kick up, when things go crazy, when the whole world is going nuts, which it seems like it is right now if you watch the news at all, you don't have to start running around. Jesus didn't run around. The, the disciples were running around rebuking if they knew how to rebuke. I don't know if they did. But they're running around. They're trying to do everything they can to save themselves. Just think of just think about this whole situation. This is chaos in action. Yeah. <laughs> this wind and waves and blowing and crazy, and they're thinking they are going to die. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. I really believe when they woke up Jesus, they weren't saying, you got to do something about this. I really don't believe that. I believe they're like, don't you understand how bad this is? Don't you know we're about to die? You're about to die. We're all going to die. You need to get up and help us do something. You know, we're doing all we can. Now, what are you going to do? And Jesus gets up. He rebukes the wind, speaks to the sea. Everything is calm. And he looks at him and says, what? You have little faith. Where is your faith? Why did you? Yeah. Why? You could have come to me 
on the hinder part of the boat, sat down, went to sleep, chaos could have been going on, and we would have made it to the other side. Yeah. You could have made it through without the chaos, without the worry, without the fear, without the turmoil, all of that going on in your life if you just trusted me from the beginning. And the word I spoke, let's pass over to the other side. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Amen. I believe yeah. in me. And what I'm saying is that that is the greatest display of rest and sonship that we can manifest. All right. Absolutely, the rebuking of the wind and the waves is a part of that sonship. Without the rest, though, could he have done it? If he was in turmoil, do you think Jesus could have done that? Probably not. But because he was at rest and trusted his God, he had the authority and the power to say those things and obey him. Yeah. It was the rest that brought him the power. It was the belief and trust in God that brought him the power. Yeah. Amen? And that's why he could help out others because he was already safe with himself. Amen? Yeah. All right. I thought y'all would shout a whole lot more now. I really did. Good, good. So that is, that is, so we know we have rest. Resting in God. Resting in God is not just, or, or the peace of God, the rest of God. And the peace of God is not just the absence of turmoil. It's in, it is calmness in the midst of turmoil. My peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives. The world gives, the world, you get peace in the world when the absence of turmoil goes away. God says you have peace even in the midst of turmoil. Yeah. Even in the midst of the waiting, even in the midst of the, before the change happens, you have peace, you have joy, and you have confidence to know what God is going to do for you. Amen? Amen. And we can manifest sonship both ways. It's not always running around rebuking things. It's one verse in the Bible that says something about people, arrogant people. And Okay. I need to find it, but, I, but it says those people that are arrogant, they even was... Um, they move around rebuking stuff, and he says, even the angel Michael, when he was disputing over the body of Moses, he said, the Lord rebuke you, yeah. not me. The Lord rebuke you. Yeah, right. He's given the authority to God. He's given it all to him. It's not me. I'm not running around rebuking. I'm letting God. I'm, I, again, y'all know, know what I'm saying, right? When God is like, everybody running around chaotic. God's standing here, and all of his children run around rebuking, binding, loosing, rebuking, binding, loosing, stop, not trying to control everything. He's like, kids, 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 yeah. calm down. I got this. Yeah. I got this. Yeah. Calm down. Be at rest. Trust me through every situation. Yeah. Be still and know that I am God. Yeah. Yeah, know that I've got this. Be settled in your spirits. There's nothing wrong with rebuking when the spirit inside you says to rebuke. But when something, when anxiety says rebuke it, you're not rebuking it through the spirit. You're rebuking it through your fear and anger. Don't do it that way. Let this peace of God rest in your heart. The one verse that the brother Aaron likes so much, it will guard your heart. It stands, the peace of God stands guard over your heart. It says, get that thought out of here. Get that anxiety out of here. Get that fear out of here. Go. Peace is going to remain in this heart. It's standing guard over it if you let it. It's just like when he said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, what you ever loose on earth. It's like the spirit is standing guard over your life. Standing guard, letting in what needs to come in, casting out what needs to be kept out. Yes, sir. Amen? Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Let the peace of God, confidence in your relationship with God will create a mind. Now, I've said this, and I'll say it again. It, it will, your relationship, knowing you're right with God will create a mindset or attitude that you can trust. When you know 
that there is nothing that you need to do to make God keep his promises. So let me ask you this. If Abraham, if God had said to Abraham, and he said, this time next year, Sarah's going to have a son. Praise God that he believed it. He became the father of everybody that, of faith. Do you think she still would have had a son if he started doubting? God, remember, God said, this time, next year, Sarah will have a son. When we are faithless, he is faithful. Oh, yeah. Am I telling you to start doubting and fearing? Absolutely not. But if you have those moments of uncertainty, get rid of it. Because if God said it, this time next year Sarah will have a son, this time next year Sarah's going to have a son. I don't yeah. care who says what and who believes what. When I say it, it's going to happen. God cannot lie. Let every man be a liar, but God is going to be true. And if I say it, it's going to be done. And if you believe it, I mean, if you, if you allow that word to be spoken over your life of health, wealth, prosperity, peace, joy, strength, everything spoken over your life, when it's spoken, it's yours. If you have those doubts, if you have those battles, don't get down and depressed. No, if God said it, it's going to happen. So why not just believe it? Why not just believe it instead of going through two more waiting for it to happen? Amen? Y'all yeah. just don't yeah. know how blessed you are. God has got good plans for your life. Good, solid, beautiful, energetic for your life. And he's saying, just enjoy the ride, people. Because we got good things coming. Amen? I think, so what do you think? What do you think? Your attitude, though, remember this, your attitude and your words will always reflect your belief. Amen. Can't get past that. You will speak what's in your heart, and your attitude about things will show forth what you truly believe. If you truly believe what God said, you will have joy about that situation. When you wonder and are not sure about what God says, you can have anxiety and uncertainty. Your attitude and your words betray the truth. So if you're not sure, if you think you're believing, but your attitude tells you something else, go back to the word of God. Believe him. Allow that to get settled so you can have joy in the midst of the waiting. Amen. All right. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. And don't want to forget, ever remember, shalom means peace. We have peace with God. Shalom means everything working in harmony. It's, it, it says it like this. There is a complex system out there, and everything's working in harmony. Everything's working as designed. That is peace in your life. It's, it's kind of like maybe a mechanical engineer might know. You might have this elaborate setup of all these gears and, di and things and all these things set up. And it only takes one little thing out of kilter to mess the whole process up. Yeah. Yeah. But the peace of God that comes in straightens all that out. And it makes the whole thing work in harmony yes, sir. Yes. for your life. So you no more turmoil. No more sadness. Well, you know, you might lose somebody. These things happen in this world, but you get over it. You never, you don't grieve like people that have no hope. You have a hope. That's right. You know, these things happen, but you're steadfast in your belief and trust in God. And you will see the peace of God, the joy of God, the rest of God, the promises of God, the goodness of God, yeah. everything overflow your life, in and through your life, and then even affect those that are around you, that if you need to say, peace be still, to calm somebody else down, <laughs> it will peace and be still, yeah. so yeah. they can be calm. Amen? Amen. All right, I'm done. I'm done. That's all I got. I hope you all enjoyed this message. Brought to you live from the Living Simple.
right. Stand up on your feet. Elders, come forward. Come on up. Praise team, come on up. We do have, we don't uh, collect.